Welcome back to Awesome Planet. As we continue our exploration of animal migrations, we head to the shores of the Delaware Bay, where one very bizarre creature makes its journey each year for two months at a very specific time. The shoreline of Cape May, New Jersey is pretty quiet for the moment, but as the tide rises, that will soon change. It's the month of May here in Delaware Bay, and Quinn and Shane from the American Littoral Society have a busy night ahead. We're here tonight to tag and count horseshoe crabs. The reason that we come out and we count horseshoe crabs is because we want to get a better sense of the horseshoe crab population. A group of volunteers will join Quinn tonight to help get some valuable info on their migration patterns. Horseshoe crabs come up to the beaches on the Delaware Bay in May and June when the water is about 59 degrees. That's their optimal temperature for spawning. As the sun sets, the 8.30 p.m. peak high tide is approaching. Horseshoe crabs not only time the tides, but also the moon. The largest number of crabs will come ashore right around the full moon in both May and June. It's a precise schedule and one that they follow rather closely. Right on time, we spot our first crabs of the night. What do you have? I have a female and a male. Crabs will be assessed in two ways. First, through a measured count that will tell us how concentrated they are in a particular area throughout the night. Three females, Three females eight seven. males. The second way to monitor horseshoe crab patterns is through a tagging system. We want to see how these horseshoe crabs are using the beaches. So by tagging them here tonight, we'll figure out if they're going to the same beach again tomorrow night or if they're going to a nearby beach. And then we want to see what the similarities and differences are between those beaches to see what they are preferring. In 2012, Superstorm Sandy wiped out a number of beaches along the East Coast. That damage decimated parts of the local ecosystem. We lost about 70% of prime horseshoe crab spawning beaches. And so for us to get a better idea of where the horseshoe crabs are utilizing beaches and what numbers and that sort of thing is very important to the continued restoration and protection of the horseshoe crab. There are four types of horseshoe crabs in the world. These Atlantic horseshoe crabs live along the East Coast with some stretching around into the Gulf of Mexico. The ones we see tonight at Delaware Bay spend the majority of their time out in the deeper waters near the continental shelf before making their annual trip to these shorelines. Just pop it in. You'll hear it click. There you go. So now we have a tagged female crab. We have 600 tags set aside specifically for this beach, but tonight we're looking for 100 to 200. And so far it looks like we'll get to the 200, so that's great. Horseshoe crabs are living fossils that have survived since the dinosaurs hundreds of millions of years ago. Quite honestly, to me, they look a little like aliens. The first thing that we should establish is that a horseshoe crab is not a crab at all. A horseshoe crab is an arthropod, which makes it more similar to a scorpion or a spider. These eyes are primarily used to find mates. These crabs have 10 eyes scattered around, from compound eyes that see images to simple light sensors. Their bodies are built perfectly to carry massive quantities of eggs to lay on these beaches. The female horseshoe crabs can hold somewhere between 80 and 120,000 eggs inside of their carapace. When they come up and spawn, they'll put about 5,000 eggs at a time into a nest. When they come in, they burrow, they'll, they'll deposit their eggs, the eggs will be fertilized, and then they move on. So through a breeding season, you could have a female crab who'll come up about 20 times between May and June to lay all of her eggs. Now that may seem like a staggering number, but in the long run, only a percent or so of these eggs will survive predation. Remarkably, that's been enough to keep populations coming back here year after year, during two particular months at a specific tide, during just the right cycle of the moon. Coming up, one migration brings another.
Welcome back to Awesome Planet as we follow different animal migrations by land and by sea. As thousands of horseshoe crabs come ashore in Delaware Bay each year to breed and lay eggs, our researchers Quinn and Shane point out how one migration affects another. The horseshoe crab has been around for essentially 475 million years doing the same basic situation, coming up here and laying their eggs. And through that time frame, birds have come to realize that this great source of fat and protein is gonna be laying on the beach everywhere in mass. The one that generally we talk about is the red knot. The red knot will be coming from South America, making a very long commute up to the Canadian Arctic. And this is their first stop. They're here for about 10 days, each group of birds. They're feasting on these horseshoe crabs, eggs which are really rich in protein. And they'll feast on those for about 10 days and then they'll continue flying to the Arctic. In order to allow these birds to continue coming back each year during their migration, the beaches close for one month during their peak stopover period. If people are coming out to the beaches, it disturbs their foraging. And if they are jumping up constantly and flying off because somebody walked down the beach, they don't have enough time to feed. They don't come here and stay until they're fat enough to leave. They come here and stay for a set period of time and they leave, whether or not they got fat. 